Thank you, Daddy. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Actually, the devotion this morning was powerful, and it was a credit to Horimo members. But I want to make you to know that truly it's, it's not that some of us we are praising Horimo. For me, I have my own experience, and as I used to say, me coming to Horimo, it was not anybody that invited me or preached to me. It was Jesus himself opening his mouth as man talking to man and say, I am sending you to my movement. Go there and work out your salvation for me. The man that I put there that is preaching my word is preaching it from my heart. It's like this is what I want every preacher and every human being to hear. So when I came back to life, it was on Friday I had my encounter till Saturday in the, in, the, in the night. I want to just give brief what prayer can do and why God is with us, especially those that carry the word of God. And if you are a true child of God, I want you to know that there are power backing you up. As long as you are a born again Christian, a genuine one, I'm not talking about fake one, genuine child of God. We don't need to be afraid, just obey God. Because when I have my encounter, I have not even gone into my salvation, whatever, there are some sins, I need to confess. But I just want to let you know that when you have accepted to serve God, and God know that the promise I made, I said, God, as I'm going to order all the things you showed me, I'm going to explain to everybody. That Saturday night, my elder brother, I don't know, he promised to come. He will have testified because he was with me there. And he came with his deeper life pastor. Like to come and know if truly my sister, what is happening to her, is it demon or what? So he came with a pastor. I was sleeping because what used to happen to me, I would sleep. And then when I woke up with message, Finda will be writing. It reached to the point Finda hand got swollen up because we were busy writing the message of God. So when I was sleeping, the pastor came here, my elder brother, they were praying, praying, praying. Then I woke up. I saw them praying, asking God, God, are you the one speak this, that? So as the pastor was praying, the deeper life pastor, God spoke, God spoke through me, and then the deeper life pastor was even an immoral pastor. Nobody knew he was the original. So then God was talking to him and said, do you have power to, to, to cast me or what? Then he now said, go and confess your sin that you people are just deceiving yourself. Majority of you in deeper life are just like perfume that have finished in the bottle. The smell is just there, but you are nothing. That is there. My brother was asking the pastor, pastor, is it true? Not knowing that the man was immoral, sleeping around. Then the pastor, then my brother began to say, then this is only God. Then in that house, when we were there, God opened my eyes, saw dogs, but... People were seeing live dogs, but me, I was seeing different pastors that I know backing at me. And then I was just asking, then God said, raise up your hands and hit the ground and command earthquake. I just want to tell you the power of God. Sunday, we're supposed to go to Bible um, chapter meeting. That was my first time to enter into a whole remote gathering. People have gathered. They invited me to come and testify. But the vehicle that we pack in our house is one of our friends. It, it got a problem for, for, for months. And the brother cannot fix it. It was overheating and it will not move for you. Drive it from here to junction. You have to wait maybe like one hour for it to stop overheating. And the, the, the lights in the paper of the, the car has expired. So there is no way we can go to the service. So I said, God, you say I should join your children. This is your movement. I was very eager to see this movement, how it look alike, how the church look alike, who are the people. So I was very eager to go and see hurry more people. So when we dress to go out, the car cannot st start everything. So we don't know what to do. We were sitting there. They find and I said, Linda, you know, Jesus said we'll go to church today. Now the car is done. What, what can we do? So we sit down there. We started praying. And then the Lord now said, go and lay your hand on the car and pray on the car and command the car and use my authority, use my name. So I say in the name of Jesus, Father, show yourself. Let this car walk. And as we are going, we'll go and come back. We use, we, as soon as we start the car, the car carry us like from here to Nanya. No ev overheating. And the car don't have paper, neither did they have uh, this. Police were not holding us. We went. And when we were coming back, that was the day they baptized me. We, we, we branched. Pastor Bimba went and baptized me. And the following day, when we used the, the car become like Sister Linda car. We were using the car. And the person that owned the car was just surprised that, ah, this car can move. But after we hand over the car to the person, the car did not move again in the sense of you have to go and change the parts. That thing made the brother to believe that truly God has visited Sister Linda. And when, when I have my encounter, Jesus told us that we should pray for the nation and the president of the country should pay 
to give us the podium to do the crusade. Because when he was small, the president is an elderly person, maybe even senior, my late mother. But God showed me vision about him when he was small, the oath he took and what he wanted to do for God. But when he became a president, he changed. So God told us that he should do revival in the nation. So, but how can we see the president? Me, I was not, uh, who, who, who am I that time? So we try our best writing to. So when he got the letter, he now called the body of Christ, like how you people say PFM or CAN, and say, there's a lady that say you have a message from Jesus Christ. Can I listen to her? Is it coming from you people? So the body of Christ, well, you people call them, you people call them here PFM or CAN, who we call them in Seilo, um, body of Christ. The, the bishop of the body of Christ told the president that, don't listen to her. She's just a liar. She's this, she's that, she's that. So the, the president tore the, the letter and trashed it in his office in the town. But when we were coming from church, the Lord said, prepare yourself today. You will see the president. I told my brethren. I said, see what I'm hearing. But everybody, some of them were doubting. We have written this letter two weeks. We have gone there. The president don't want to see us. The security, they will push you. And we got to, we'll see. I said, well, this is what I had. So we were driving from like Nyanya to Kuali here. That is how the distance is from the church. We were coming, and then as we reached in the house, we were trying to open the door. There was no light. Finda was holding my phone. And then the phone rang. And then Finda picked, hello. Then the, 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 the president, who we didn't know it was the president, he now said, is this Sister Linda? The Finda said, who are, who, are you? who are you? Who am I speaking with? He now said, you are speaking with the president. Then Finda fear, run and go and give Pastor Bemba the phone. Pastor Bemba took the phone. Hello, he to use man voice. Who is this? Then he now said, is this the line of Sister Linda? Then Pastor Bemba now said, who do you want to speak? He said, Sister Linda, who am I speaking? He said, the president. Pastor Bemba took run and came and gave me the phone. Ah, ah. I was just looking at them. Then he said, answer, answer. Then I picked. Then he became provoked and said, am I speaking with Sister Linda? I said, yes. Who am I speaking? He said, are you Sister Linda? I said, yes. He said, um, you are speaking with the president of Sierra Leone and um, President Annette Baikoma. I said, oh, nice meeting you, sir. Nice hearing your voice. He now said, can I, where are you staying? Can I send my, my escorts to come and pick you? Then I hold the phone on my hand. I say, Pastor Bimba. He said, he want to send escorts to come and pick Pastor Bimba. I said, who's escort? We are all going there. So, and I said, don't worry. My pastor said he will bring me. He said, okay. And Pastor Bimba car was like, push and start that time. So when we got to the place, and when they saw the car, they thought that we would miss our way. The security people came out and said, where are you people going? So Pastor Bimba said, so we're going to see the president. I said, who's president? They were even asking us funny questions. And then he now says, Sister Linda, not knowing that the president have called from the last junction, the security, all the soldiers were like, ah, Sister Linda, what I want to say here is that when he told, he was telling me, he told the paper in his office. But when he got home, sitting in his office in his house, the paper appeared before him. Uh -huh. He now said, ah, ah. Is it two paper? Amen. So he said, ah, so this letter was in my office. I tore it. How did this letter get? Is it two letters they brought to me? Ah. When he wanted to tore it, he said he had something to him that call her. Then she now, he now called me. When I go to the president, they stop us. Like, if you want to enter our president, company, like the entire Kuali, half of Kuali is, is his estate and have different gates, different gates, and different houses. So even if you enter there to kidnap the, the president, you will not know the main house. And you have gate upon gate. You will enter a compound, they will screen you. You enter another estate, they will screen you. So you will not know the main estate is staying. So when I was going, feeling that they were crying, they said I should not carry for anything. And I know the message the Lord gave me for our president was very hard. So when I went and sat down, you, you welcomed me with sat down. I said, how can I say it? God said, I am here, don't fear him. And what make him to believe? When I pray, the Lord show me some things about him. When I say it, it look like, look at it, I say, have you said anybody this thing? I say, no. He say, because what you are saying, they ask me, how old are you? He noticed that even when he was even in secondary school, I was not born yet. So how will I know secret thing about him? So he now told me that I want you to do something for me. I want to, I want to hire you. I want to employ you to be my prayer um, person in the house. I now say no. I now gave him that the record book. Now coming to Holy More, Holiness Revival Movement. There is a young boy. I'm doing this so that coordinators will learn. A young boy joined the ministry as soon as he heard that the director is coming to Sierra Leone. He quickly joined the movement and he was doing zeal, going up and down, connecting. They became everybody like this young man. 
and now they make him to be like uh, among the, uh, the ushers or uh, protocol. They never knew that it was an assigned agent for Dadirika. So it was later when daddy came preaching, the brother came and gave powerful testimony. God changed him. He was this, he was that. Everybody was clapping. We never knew it was just a makeup story. And our leaders have used him. You know, the brother has Z. So one time daddy Rika was preaching. Daddy felt something on his body. And in, 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 in our own lay, we used to say, which gun? When they shoot you, that is what they shoot my father that kills him. It will enter your blood and it will be working in your blood. You will die. So they observed that he went for the morning preaching. He came back in the evening preaching. That is that the brother now break into tears and begin to confess. And then he confessed. He said, this movement, that many of you in this movement don't know this movement, that there is a meeting that Lucifer called. It was an international witchcraft meeting. And when they were in the meeting, he never knew about Horimore. It was in that meeting they announced about Horimore to them. That Satan gathered all the witches, like representatives from different nations, came to that meeting. And in that meeting, they noticed that their master, Lucifer, was furious, was disturbed, going up and down. And some of the said, both white, black, every nationality, witches and wizards were there in grades of levels. And then he said that him, all his life, he has been a wizard because he was born with it. He was inside the mother womb. He was born as a wizard. So this is, it's, he, he grew up in the sea. So he's a, he's a strong demon in the sea. So he started telling us that, that Lucifer told him that the fire we succeeded to quench how many years ago, that we are not seeing fire anywhere like that. There is a fire that is coming that is very, very great, that even in Lucifer is afraid for like his children. Like, like when you say a great fire will come and if the government did not do something, many Nigerians will die because it's a fire that is going to wipe houses. So that was what Lucifer, so they, they, they were like, what will make great master to be fearing like this? So he now called them and said, we need to do a teamwork. That this fire that is coming, even him, he have to get more strength to face that fire. That is not a small fire. And that fire, if they don't fight that fire, that fire will kindle all that fire. And it's like all their labors from thousands of years that have succeeded to quench the fire in the world. That fire is coming to ignite it again. So everybody was like, ah. Is it going to be fire in the wall? Is it what? So he now told him that there is a movement. This brother said it was in the kingdom of darkness he had about Horimon. He said there is a movement that that righteous man have established. And he has given them much power that we cannot stand them. We need a teamwork. And we are here to come and strategize how we can enter and quench that fire. So everybody was giving ideas how we can do it. So, and then Lucifer now told, charge those ones in Sierra Leone and say, the leader of the team is coming to your nation. So all those Sierra Leone witches, they should stand up and give them appointment. And him, is a butcher. And him, is a young boy, he has been killing. He say, he cannot count how many people he has killed. So they're not giving the assignment, say, he said, Lucifer now said that, he's charging all the witches and wizards worldwide, in the village, in the city, in the town, anywhere you are. Anytime you hear that they have established this movement, Holiness Event Movement, make sure you join them. And when you join them, you will now, all you are doing is to take over position. It should be a leader. Every department, make sure you work very hard. By that, they will now hand over the work to us and we will quench it. So now you are going to join them. You will go with great zeal. I will give you energy that people will ask if you are a human being. You will not get tired. So I am studying it because I see it happening in life when me and daddy, we are traveling to state nation. We are seeing some wrong people, leaders will be giving them to do this, to do this. So I just came out to say this so that you will learn from what we are hearing. So Satan told the boy, the boy that I'm going to give you energy. Energy that you will not get tired. That every department will be using you. People, in fact, and that brother was very known. Everybody like the brother. They will be called, brother, this, come, hey, do this. for. He's not getting tired. He will be helping women in the kitchen. He's helping leaders there. He's carrying speaker. He's doing crusade, connecting. The, the brother was everywhere. And everybody was like, and he will be giving fake testimony. I wasted my life for Jesus. Satan used me. I'm now converted. These, these, these people begin to like this brother. In fact, others were relaxing. Only him was doing anything. 
And when we came there, they introduced him to us and said, Mommy, he came. He says, Mommy Linda, your testimony changed me. He was doing all. Hey, I am blessed to see that the, the brother more very sweet. But not, not knowing that he was an assigned agent. So after they, he, try, he said he tried to attack that day, then the Lord hit him. They just saw this brother fall down. Bow. Everybody was, ah, ah, ah. He started stretching, stretching. They carry him out. Ah, brother, what happened? They were thinking maybe, have you know it is it the overwork that make you collapse? The brother now said that you people don't have designing spirit. That laziness have made you people to hand over the house of God to us. That children of God are very lazy. They don't want to walk. They all want to relax. That we, Satan, have told us to join you. That he wants us, all the more members, to know that this ministry is a fire. And Satan himself feared this ministry. But when he joined Horimo, he noticed that the members of Horimo, that are the genuine children of God, they don't even know where they are. They don't even take this thing serious. He says something that is very cherous, um, precious. He said him, his witchcraft power, he, he, he tre treasure it, he protect it, he do regular sacrifice to, to keep his power. Because Satan will tell you that if you allow this power to do, they will kill you in the world. As three bullets will go. So he always protects his power. But he noticed that children of God, when he joined Remo, he noticed that sometimes they will be praying. People are not bothered. They don't come. They don't do spiritual things. And he knows that this spiritual thing people are doing in the house of God is the one that will keep them. But all Remo members, they are not even serious. So he was looking at them and said, ah, why, why grandmaster is fearing these people? When the people, when I came among them, they are not even serious. So when he was saying this, I came to know that God is really protecting or not that some of, some of the members of all or some of the, the leaders, they are not even doing what to make them to, to acquire this protection. But God, because God has given us a name that these are my children. So he's doing his part. That is in the Bible. Because of David, because of, of, of David, because of the promise I have with Abraham, I will protect Israel even when they are going to sin. So I'm seeing all more in that kind of way that it's just because God has made covenant with our father and he's using this ministry to do his end time. But I'm seeing that we, the member of all more, majority of us, we are not taking this thing serious. Maybe we are just relaxed. Ah, God says, I want just to open your eyes to know that when we pray, and the brother said, when the children of God pray, he said, any time I remember the genuine, when they pray, he say, even him that have great power, he have to be looking for a way to go out. That is the time he will give an excuse. He said, because the place will be too hot for them. And immediately he said, they will send message to him and say, leave that place. The, th the thing is getting another level. That any time they say, prayer meeting is that, they will do all to come early to quench. Put, he said, some, some kind of sleep. They will do it. But anytime they announce that there is going to be prayer, they will be doing all so that when people come, they will not pray. See, because when children of God increase their prayer, it says prayer is a level. It's like a hot water. A wizard, a witch can stand when the prayer is second. But when the children of God go into intensive prayer, he said, even their grandmaster Lucifer will say, learn for your life, leave that prayer. Because it's like when God is coming down, it's like an earthquake that anybody that is evil there will run away. He says, so that's why when they are always among children of God, they always make sure that they should be weak. Their prayer should not be fervent. People should be just sluggish so that they cannot suffocate them. That brother said a lot of things that opened my eyes and he was talking. And say all this one, they pray on him and say deliverance, he was not delivered. It was just fake. And this and this and this. And now I'm, run, I'm running up with another one. What God did for us. Prayer is the key. And I thank God for Daddy Rika. Daddy Rika prays. Daddy Rika believe in prayer. Daddy Rika, even if he's so tired, he will make sure that he will be praying. You see him chanting, speaking. Even you see that he was sleeping, dozing, and come back. As he wake up, it's prayer. It's prayer. If we are in prayer, daddy sleep in devotion. Maybe we will not say, ah, let's all go and sleep. Because as you wake him up, daddy is late. You will, he will start where we we'll stop. We'll say, oh yeah, let's go. Let's start the prayer again. So even we in the house, we want to sleep. If we pray daddy is sleeping, we'll leave him on the chair there. Everybody run to the room. Because if you wake him to say, daddy, let's go into the room. He will say, we did not finish the prayer. We will start again another prayer. So we know that prayer is not getting enough for him. He likes prayer. That is daddy for you. So and I now notice that this prayer is really working for daddy. Something happened. The doctor that was treating us before we came to know that Dr. Evelyn was a witch, we didn't know. So she became a, like a family doctor to us. So anytime we travel, she will give us medicine, treat us. When we come, we will treat us. But I noticed that it reached a point that daddy was not, 
It will just be rising and falling in sickness, malaria, malaria. I said, this malaria will not go. And this is the doctor. He will come and take blood sample. He say plus, plus, malaria, this and this and this. So one night, the thing was so intense. I even, this was the reason make me now to go into like, I want to know how to give injection, how to set drip because every time we have to bring people to inject daddy. But daddy was still strong. Coming to that, he's coughing. He will be coughing. I started crying. One night, she came and treated daddy and told me when the drip finished out, she'll remove the, the, the drip and whatever. So I was not sleeping in between. She left maybe around those 7, 8 in the night. So around those 11 to 12, she woke me up with a call. So when she woke me up with a call and said, Mommy, I just have a dream, a revelation. That is what she said. You know, she have a big book. Some of you that know her, she have a big book to be writing. So she told me, say, see the dream I got, that I saw they push a white coffin in your parlor. And in your parlor, the coffin was very white. And when they opened the coffin, it was daddy that was inside. But see the joyful thing about the dream. Daddy mansion was very big. He went to heaven. So they say, don't be afraid. Everything will be fine. I dropped the phone. I said, ah, ah. I look at my life. I say, God, I just got married. Me, I will be orphan, widow, again. And secondly, you know what people are saying. Some are saying I'm evil. They will say she have come and do a mission and kill this man. Why do you want to kill this man? Then, secondly, I say, God, ah, ah, see what this man is doing for you. Even if daddy die now, I don't think my faith will continue because persecution trial will just make me drop. Who will believe me again? At least daddy came and gave my re the revelation he gave me strength by giving scriptures back in it. Of, I cannot defend this word you put in my mouth. What have this man done that you want to kill him? Then I told God again, I say, when you take a look in her remote worldwide, I've not seen any coordinator that will stand up to take over daddy in this ministry. Nobody. I say, so you just want to damn our souls. God, why are you doing this? Are you not pitying us? Then I came outside. I will look at him. He's sleeping. I came outside with tears in my eyes. I started crying. I was crying because I believe her. I didn't know she was part of them. That time, God have not shown her. I did believe her. So I thought that this is going to be real. So as I was crying, God spoke to me and said to me, he said, whenever, he said, you people, my children that call on my name, there is a problem with you people. You always forget the word of God. I said, prove all things. When you had a message, any message, revelation, preaching, anything that they say God say, always check it with me. Have you prayed? You, I'm expecting you to pray to ask God, are you the one that sent this message? You... As you have believed it, don't you know that Satan just wants to get your belief and your consent? Now that you are believing it, it will endorse it. Get up and pray. So I, I tie my head. I started praying. So he now said that, am I a wicked God? I say even the foolishness of God is more wiser than the wisdom of man. Take a look at the wall, all over the wall. How many fake pastors are everywhere? Even in the sense that they are spoiling the work. But because they are making a little impact, at least they are even carrying the gospel of Christ. Saving others. Although it cannot be 100% truth, but at least they are making people to know about me. I leave them on earth. They are doing their work because the little impact they are doing, at least I'm taking praises for me. Is it my son that I've raised up this end time? Bringing genuine soul, making people to know my value, even making people to know that I'm important in their life. Is it so that I will kill? Can't you have wisdom? Is it to kill people is my joy? I have death and life in my hand. I cannot kill my son. Then I now begin to thank God. Then he now say, enter into prayer and ask where the message is coming from. I started praying. I pray, I pray all the biting on daddy church. We went to India, they cannot see anything. London, they cannot see anything. America, they check nothing. In teaching hospital here, we went to how many consultants they check. They in India they now told daddy that what is your occupation? Daddy say pastor preaching. They say, Well, since we did not see anything, we'll just give you cancer that you should reduce your preaching. That is a me, reduce my preaching. That maybe you have stretched your voice, so the voice is cracking. So daddy should not be preaching always. Daddy said, This is the devil. That is what he wants to succeed. So that I will not be preaching. Daddy, daddy did not even listen to them. Daddy said he was even planning message that evening to go and preach. In the program. So, when we got to in, in London, the thing continued. Daddy will be preaching his eyes. He will be bringing water. Me, I will be crying. People begin to take notes. Mommy, what happened? Daddy is struggling the pulpit. Let him stop the preaching. I will write him notes. Daddy, he says, okay, it's okay. I will finish this message. 
So when I prayed that night, as I was praying, I prayed, I prayed, I went to sleep. God gave me two dreams. I want to tell you, prayer is the key. When you pray, you will see the answer of God. And not only praying, you are in a place where God is with us. So it's because you don't pray, literally you carry fear. Me, I believe in prayer. So when I pray, I went to sleep. When I sleep in my sleep, I now saw this Dr. Evelyn that it was treating people, injecting people. So in, our, in, our, in my sleep, it's supposed to inject daddy like we are going for mission work. We, me and daddy, because we used to take malaria injection, treat ourselves before traveling to other nations. It's regular, we used to do some, because she came with that idea that daddy, anytime you know some country have malaria, disease, all this, thing, so you people should be taking injection before traveling. So we, we are seeing it as a good thing, good, we carry drugs, injection. So in this dream, it was like that. But I noticed that she was using a used syringe on a sick person to inject daddy, unknown to daddy. Then I said, ah, this is not a medical acting. This is wrong. How can you use a, a used syringe on daddy? So as I saw her from far, there's a nurse that before we came to notice her, a nurse was working with her. We pick up that nurse that she was the witch. So we were even telling her, be careful. That nurse is not clean. So she said she put the nurse away. But in that dream, she and the nurse were working and the nurse was hiding for daddy not to see. So, when I saw this dream, immediately I was walking to go and confront her that, you say you are a doctor, why will he use a used syringe on daddy? So as I was going, I said, God, what is the meaning of this? I was very angry in the dream, going to meet her. And God now say, the sickness you are thinking is a natural, she is the one putting it. it she's, she has given the assignment to kill my son, but she cannot do it. Her time is up. I woke up in that dream. I look at daddy, he was still sleeping. I said, wonderful. I said, God, confirm this thing for me. He said, my son is ill. I lie down, I slept. In the dream, daddy was brushing his mouth. And then I had him calling me, mommy, mommy, come. So when he was brushing his mouth, I came there. A catfish jumped out of his mouth. And he said, mommy, see, this is the thing that has been biting me here. Then I said, daddy, you are allowed to go. The catfish was trying to go. I carry a stick. I hit the head, break it. Very black catfish. I break it. Then I look at him. He said, ah, I'm free. I'm free. Then I wake up in the dream. I woke daddy. I told him the dream. Daddy said, this is God. And he prayed was confirmed. We now stop all the injection, the drugs. Senator now brought his own doctor. As soon as Senator brought his doctor, the doctor looked at daddy and said, who is the doctor that is treating you? You are addicted to the drugs. Because when daddy talked, drugs will be coming out of his, the smell. So we came to know that this was the plan. We now begin to pray against her. God reveal this lady. Who is she? God now make us to know that. This is, this is, this is, this is. So I learned my lesson there that said, God, if not that we pray, if not that, if I should have just believed and said, hey, my husband is going to die, I'm not preparing, I will now begin to do, this thing should have worked. So prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Lastly, I ran up with this one. One conference, 2016 or 2017, the altar was there. A woman came and greeted me, mommy, well done. As she was going, she pressed on my leg, as if she wants to stand up. So I supported that. She put her hand on my leg. She stand up. So when she was going, she just turned and looked at me. Two of us, our eye jammed. But I didn't take it anything. But me, I was like, ah, this kind of friskiness is too much. She just came and was touching my leg. And, and me, that boldness to be rebuking person, say, don't touch me like this. He used to, sometimes daddy would say, tell them, don't be allowing them to be touching like this. So, but I just look at her, she go, I never know that woman have done something to my leg. After the conference, one week, I was driving from the market, going to my house. As soon as I take the cough, it's like a dog bites me on my leg. And then the steering was going. I went and hit at the post office. I was going out of the road. Even the police was looking at me. I was not able to control. I was with one leader's wife in the car. It was like, mommy, mommy, mommy. I was just stretching. My leg was like they are removing it. So I said, ah, ah. And then when I was cooking in the house with one young brother, he was helping me in the kitchen. I heard the voice, pray. Leave the food, go and pray. So I said, ah, it's late, it's past seven. I don't want daddy to say we cook late. I was still cooking, but I heard the voice say pray. As soon as the brother brought the ogu to put inside the leaf, the hot oil was there. And then I now fell down. The oil almost poured on me. The brother pushed the pot. I fell down, my leg began to shake like this. Then the brother ran, daddy, 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 mommy, is, something's happening, mommy, in the kitchen, they carry me. Then after the prayer, daddy came and prayed, prayed. He asked, what happened? I said, ah. Something is happening to me, I don't know. So I explained the dream to daddy and the, the experience. Do you recognize the woman that said no? 
One day we were going to just. That was where I know that prayer, prayer is a prayer is the answer, is the key. We were in the in the jeep, see choir. Brother Godwin was the one driving. My daughter was there. Daddy was there. One of our sisters from Europe and two of the foreign bread pastors were with us. We are going to Joss. We are getting to Joss. They were making the road to Joss. That it was only one way in and out. The other side was blocked. So there was a long queue of an old up, and then there was a road coming. So we never knew, Brother Godwin, they, he had noticed that the brake has failed. But he don't want to put panic in us. So he started struggling with it. And we are descending. So me, I was having this attack. Little thing, something will bite me. We will pray, pray, pray. So I just lie down like this. And then when I turn, I noticed that he was sleeping. It's because the journey was so long. So when I open my eye, I just see a car, a trailer giving us like one. Because Godwin, I have to. Thank you, Pastor. But that Godwin, I have to. Because this is old up. Our online going, there was a long queue entering Joss. So Godwin have to leave our queue to try to use the other lane because car was not coming frequently like that. So maybe you want to use that lane to find a way to park. But there was a big ditch right and left. So he now leave our road, was struggling in the other road. So he came and was meet, like coming to hit a trailer. The trailer was looking at him. This man is in his senses and he was loaded. He too was coming with speed. So he began to give Godwin light. Pong, pong. But Godwin will not have way to enter this old, this old road because, you know, cars, cars, cars. How will he enter? If he enters, it's, it's another, he will hit a car and something. And there is no way for him to park there. So we are just going like this. So when I, be, I was feeling the light on my eyes, I was sleeping. I opened my eyes. I saw trailer like we are going to kiss this trailer. Then I said, Brother Godwin. He now said, Mommy, we have lost break. I said, Ah. Apply the hand break. He said, I've done all. So you were just going with faith now or whatever you don't know. So I started shouting. My daughter woke up and saw the trailer. The trailer too was like, okay, since you don't want to, let come and hit ourselves. So my daughter said, mommy, she grabbed me like this. Then everybody woke up in the car, started shouting, started shouting. And then we were with Pastor Amma that time. Pastor Amma said, go out, Godwin, go like this. He said, there's no way, there's no way. We were struggling, struggling like this. And then Daddy Rika wake up and saw the thing. That everybody is shaking, shouting. Me, I don't say the Lord's Prayer. I ended it with the grace. I don't even know it again. I, I, I die now. I don't understand because can I jump out of this car? What is happening? I was just shouting, Jesus, Jesus. And I noticed Daddy quiet like this. And then he now command, the way Daddy shouted, I command in the name of Jesus, car stop! The car go brrrr, and we stop bang like this. I'm telling you. Praise the Lord. He did not even say too much. He just command the will to stop. And this is how somebody delayed to, you know when you, when you are in the queue, some people will stop their car. So when the car begins to move, you have to take time to start your car. So somebody delayed. So there was a little gap. But we not caught it in between that place. The trailer came and even hit our side. It would bounce like this. And we caught like this. God, we begin to, the car was going like this. This is equal. Dragging to, when daddy command, the car just go, do like this and stop. People were looking at us. They, they were just looking. The car should have been damaged because it was a big ditch. As daddy just prayed that prayer. As he said, the car should hold the wheel. Jesus, take over the wheel. Stop. He shouted like this in the car. We go, boom, 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 and then we stop. I look at him and say, eh? Thank God daddy was in this car. Because this is how we should have died this way. <laughs> so the car stopped. And then Pastor Mike was the coordinator that time. He now quickly came and rescued us. But the wonderful thing is that the way the car was dragging, when the narrator came, Godwin was saying, even him is surprised that nothing was injured like what we were thinking. And then we get to Joss. This attack of my leg continued. We went to teaching hospital. They cannot find anything that is wrong with the leg. You see, most people know. So one time, daddy went for preaching. He came back. I cannot sleep throughout the night. I will be crying. Because as I sleep, it's like something will come and bite me. And will do it as if he want to remove my flesh. So daddy now said, today, we will undo that thing. So when he came back from prayer, he came to the room. And then I see the power of God. Because this thing has been more than months. It's like, the, it's like, I told daddy that this thing is like, if I stand to preach, I will collapse on the pulpit. Because when you bite me, anything I'm doing, I will fall down. If I, I will fall down. 
So daddy now so pray. I just want to tell you the power of prayer. Daddy lay hand on my leg and he said we'll pray. Until we prayed for one hour so. He was very aggressive with the prayer. We started praying. We pray. We pray. Me that they are praying for, I pray, pray. I got tired. Daddy was still praying and told people in the church, just people, and Pastor Mike brings some leaders. We pray. We pray. Daddy, bind, bind, prayer. And daddy say, you will not see it again. And he get that kind of faith in him. If daddy tells you, it is over. Just believe. I say, ah, thank God. And since that day to now, the tears stop. We didn't see anything again. Nothing happened again. We went to one place. They serve us food. You know, stubbornness of man. Me, I will say I'm very stubborn sometimes to the voice of God. Don't eat this food. Don't eat this food. But we just came. I was very tired. And I said, God, if I don't eat this the food, we came in the evening. I ate that food. Prepared to go for the program. That was in Port Harcourt. As we were preparing to go for the program, I started vomiting blood. Ah, that is all. That is no understand. It's when he go, he came back. And then the Lord told me that you have been poisoned. I told you. But I will deliver you. Daddy came and prayed for me because I was just vomiting blood in the bathroom everywhere. I was crying. I cannot move. I was dragging. He started the program. People did not see me. I was battling in the house. It happened again when we went to America one year like this again. They gave him food for me. He put the food. As soon as I ate the food, the voice told me that you have eaten poison. Then I started vomiting blood in the toilet. He came there. He said, ah, he prayed. Daddy has been my helper. He prayed. And then the thing stopped. So I now noticed that. He now told me that this assignment that God has given you, mommy, is only prayer that will help you. So ginger your prayer. So I just want to encourage you that prayer is the key. But I'm noticing that anytime they say prayer, people will be so weak. They will be so sleepy. They will be so tired. If it's on leaders, coordinator, chapter leader, you need they will, People will be telling us that our pastor cannot pray. They, when they say prayer, they will not see. They will be sleeping, dozing. And I want to tell you that this thing is the thing that we keep holy more. Without prayer, this ministry will not be a name. It will not have effect. And learn from what that, brought, that, that wizard said that. Anytime they notice the prayer temple, maybe they are trying to put weakness, but people are still praying. They are trying to put weakness, people are still praying. That prayer, when it intense, they will leave. But if you see they succeeded to make us to be weak, Tired, you will sit down. Some, some of you begin to murmur, this prayer not go finish. Your own has finished. And he told us that anywhere in the world, that Daddy Rika should know this, anywhere in the world, that they say, Holy Mother has established, even it's in a village, that Daddy Rika should know that the crowd of people are coming. I will not say majority, they say, but most of them that are coming, it is witches and wizards just to kill this ministry because Satan have told them, we must quench the fire. So why I'm en 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 enlightening you this morning, for you to know that you are in a place where Lucifer has known that we are the fire, and this fire is saying, for allow this fire, it is going to light other fire that we have closed. So they should always make sure that they should block us. He said the speed that this fire is coming with. If we don't come together, that's why he summons all the witches and witches everywhere. That Lucifer said, he need their teamwork to stop because the person that is leading them is that righteous man. And we need to use force. The only way they can use the, the way to stop us because you know that righteous man, he is a righteous God and if we begin to do sin, he will leave us. So it's to enter. He now told his people that we cannot force them, we cannot stop them by using power in front of them. We need to enter into their midst. And when we enter into their midst, everybody take position. Overwork more than the zealous one. Take their position from their hand. Do things that they will not be able to dictate you. That they will just eventually a leader will say, You are my right hand boy. You are my right hand woman. You will begin to lay hand on them because you will be carried by their zeal. And that is how we will take position from there and begin to weaken them. By that, if you came here, you see candle, you will off this one. You will off this one. If somebody give you access in his house, when you enter a person's house, they, they give you access. When you enter a room, you off the room, you have access. So they are zeal. Some of these people, they are zeal is to enter into the house of God, go into the coordinator of his office light, go to his house, office light, go to this. So please, may the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. May God revive us with prayer and we'll overcome in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen.